Everyone knows the story of the Ford Mustang. It started life in 1964. Steve McQueen drove one in the film Bullet. It sold in the millions and over the course of the last 50 years, it's become a symbol of the American dream. But you'll also know you can never actually buy one here. You could import one, but you couldn't buy one officially from your Ford dealer. But that's now all changed because as you'll notice, I'm getting into this car on the right hand side. <sighs> oh, do you know what? I can't tell you how wonderful this is, sitting on this side of the car without having the compromise of sitting over there. And what a lovely place it is. There's this step dashboard, these little chrome switches, and the speedo that says not only miles an hour, but also ground speed. And if you forget which car you're in, there's a plaque up there that says Mustang since 1964. It's not all form and no function though. There are two large cup holders in the centre console, a large glove box for your gloves, and while the plastics are a bit hit and miss in places, it's a lot better than some other American cars that have crossed the pond. The retro detailing is contrasted by a modern 8-inch touchscreen infotainment screen featuring Ford Sync 2. It's similar to the systems you'll find in the Ford Mondeo and C-Max and allows you to control phone, audio and climate functions. But SatNav is a £795 option, although that does include an upgraded sound system with a subwoofer in the boot. Speaking of the boot, you can fit two large suitcases in here, but once you've hauled it over the boot lip, you'll notice that this gap here is a little bit tight. Now Ford says this is a full four-seater, but I think it's better to think of this as a two plus two. Now, getting into the back here is a little bit tight, but it's no more difficult than in most coupes of this size. But you'll notice I'm really struggling for headroom. It's only really suitable for children back here. Having said that, both of these rear seats fold down to give yourself a little bit more boot room. The Mustang may be an American icon, but it's been designed by a Brit called Moray Callum. He's taken all the classic Mustang design cues like the shark nose front end, muscular haunches and three bar rear light clusters and put them on a car that still manages to look modern. Now you can have your Mustang in coupe or convertible body styles and the entry level car comes with a 2.3 litre four cylinder petrol engine. But you don't want that. You want to have this because this car comes with a five litre V8. Now you want to have a V8 because owning a Mustang is all about having eight cylinders under the bonnet. It's all part of the American dream and what a V8 this is. Now, it may be naturally aspirated, but this car really loves to rev. Oh! <laughs> Listen to that! It sounds so fantastic! Now, <laughs> I've got to slow down a little bit. Now, this car comes as standard with a six-speed manual gearbox. And Ford will sell you a six-speed auto for an extra £1,500 but I wouldn't bother because this gearbox is so slick. It's really refined too. The V8 just burbles away in the background. The ride is very good and these sports seats are like big comfy armchairs. All Mustangs come as standard with traction control and if you turn it off, you can revel in all that power through the rear wheels. This car also gets another cool feature, but I need to pull over to show it to you. Go for the V8 GT and you get something called Line Lock, which allows you to be an absolute hooligan. Now it works by it grabbing the front wheels and you're allowed to burn up the rears. Now you've got to be in track mode, which I'm in. You've got to go into the little computer down here. I'll go down to Line Lock. Uh, press OK to initialize. OK. Initialize complete. Firmly apply and hold the brake to engage. Here we go. <laughs> There are some negatives though. While it's the first standard Mustang to have independent rear suspension, it still feels less sure-footed on bumpy British roads than European coupes, and it feels absolutely massive on the road. Now while I'm moaning, there are a few drawbacks with this car. First of which is this centre console. Now it hasn't been changed over from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. So it means that when you're cruising along on the motorway and you want to rest your arm, you end up putting it into the cup holder. The plastic's a bit shonky in places. 
up here and up here it feels a little bit cheap but having said that if you've owned a Mustang of old you'll be seriously impressed by the quality in here it's not too bad it's not cheap to run either the Mustang pushes out 299 grams per kilometer of CO2 and returns a claimed 20.9 mpg drive it like I've been doing all day and you'll be getting significantly less than that but there is always the four-cylinder version, which returns over 30 mpg. But running costs aren't important with a car like this. It especially isn't important when you're saving so much money by buying one of these in the first place. Want to guess how much this is? 60,000? 70,000 a push? No, it costs half that. You can have a Mustang V8 Coupe for the same price as a BMW 4 Series 2 litre diesel. That puts it into perspective. Now you could say the Mustang is a little bit rough around the edges, but that's very much this car's charm. It has character by the bucket load, it's incredibly cheap to buy, and if you buy one now, you won't be sitting on the left-hand side. To see the types of cars you could be buying for this type of money, click on the video on the right to watch the Audi TT, or for a car of similar performance, click on the video on the left to watch our review of the BMW M4. Click up there to watch our latest video, and on our logo to subscribe.